Look who? Look through the people and you'll see it's me. Hmm? Really? <laughs> Was it no? Really? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, we're, trying to, we're trying to encourage him <laughs> and his comedy career. Yes, yeah, coming up. You know, eventually yeah. he'll get there. Man cannot live by bread alone. <laughs> so I'm trying stand up comedy. Wake up Nigeria is fine. I love the paycheck. <laughs> but um <laughs> Trips outside the country have to be paid for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very well said. Now, it's your favorite friendly neighborhood anchors with a splash of sunshine. And, of course, uh, we have what the doctor prescribes uh, as a dose of premium family entertainment. Oh, yes. So no need to check your television sets. It's yeah. still the amazing, wonderful, and real TV show here. Wake mm. Up Nigeria. It's not a comedy show. It's the one you wake up to every single morning of the week. Talking about, you know, shows, <laughs> we don't do this alone. We need Back up. Yes. We my need support. Audience, the only one person who laughed at my joke. Thank you very much, Mr. Mike. Wow. Let's go. Woohoo! Thank you. You were trying to, but I don't understand how you're saying it. What are you trying? What are you trying to do? I, I was trying to. No, not you. Titi, Titi was okay. trying to segue. I didn't understand. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't a segue. It was just excitement to see you, Mike. <laughs> I was just excited. Uh -huh. oh, you know, Titi, I just had to Titi, make Titi. sure I welcomed you in the right way. Oh, right Titi, around. really? How are you doing now? How are you doing, guys? Good morning. Good. 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 Tuesday, the most productive day of the week, by the way. Yes. What are your plans for today? Yeah. First of all, to entertain everybody out there okay. and also to bring you that thrill that we're known for. Make your day a whole lot more exciting. All mm -hmm. you have to do is just promise us that you're going to, for the next one hour, for the five minutes, follow us through the entire ride. Our Tuesday editions of the show are always buzzing and we're always glad that you've chosen to start your day with us. Today's edition is specifically curated to put a smile on your face. Of course, we aim to get better every single day, so you just wait and see. My name is Mazino Appeal. And I'm Titi Laya Oyinso. Please use the hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC across all social media platforms. Be a part of the best show on Nigerian TV. Why are you rushing? Take it easy. I'm not rushing. Remember, you can watch us live <laughs> from anywhere across the world. You want to download the app on Google Play Store and on iOS. I mentioned yesterday I'm a chatterbox, and I implore you to chat with us <laughs> on all these platforms. Talk about Instagram, talk about Facebook, at TVC Connect, so we can get the ball rolling. Let's do that. Let's tell mm -hmm. them who we have coming up. Dr. Tiwa Tayo Lasabikan. No, Lashe Bikon. Lashe Bikon. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> She's a senior resident, Dr. Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Yaba, mm -hmm. Lagos, uh, who obtained his medical uh, degree at the uh, University of Ibadan, Nigeria, and attending the University of South Wales, United Kingdom. He'll be joining us today, and we'll be having a very interesting chat about depression uh, mm. on our health segment. Mm. We have Ola Bisi Oni, founder of Value Added Parenting and a graduate of Business Admin from Unilag. She is really skilled in parenting, learning styles, identification and diagnosis as well. It's going to be really interesting uh, as she joins us to talk about children's learning styles and how parents can use the holiday to discover it. And Mojisola, any Loloba, oh sorry, any Lolobo. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, any Lolobo. <laughs> I got that right now. Thank you very much. Also known as Gisela is a Nigerian singer and also songwriter and began her music career in 2009 as a backup singer for artists like uh, Gbenga, okay, Gbemishola, okay, and also oh, so many others. Today we get to see her in her own steam, under her own steam, and we can't wait to see that. Abuchi Pita Ugu is the chief executive officer at iconic Nigerian record label Chocolate City. He's a respected professional in Nigerian and African music industry, as well as the wider creative sector. Now, he got his start in the music industry in 2008, and we're going to be finding out what he's been up to since then. It's Tuesday, people. Yes, indeed it yeah. is. It's not the most productive day. It's the day you left everything from Monday undone <laughs> that you have to get which done Which is why it is. No, 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 which is why it is. People it's just actually start working a lazy on Monday And that's day. why. And yeah. at the end, that's why. So even if there was also something I needed to do yesterday, but it, I just put it to, and I'll yeah. do that stuff today. And so that Everybody when I has about meetings that, on Monday. So yeah. after those meetings, you're drained. There's nothing else you can do. And you're like, why did this meeting not come with donuts and... and Are you still being our meetings on Mondays? What? It's okay. Mm. No! I, I agree with you in any case. <laughs> yes, we said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, mm -hmm. uh, Moroccans are known to be some of the most beautiful women in Africa. Oh, 
why are we talking about Moroccan women? Oh, yeah, we have so much. I got married and I'm wearing my ring now for the first time in a long time. <laughs> what is this one Who's talking about? Is this want... like a shield, like Captain want... America's shield or what? I don't want any of that attention. <laughs> Please. <laughs> but really, uh, you, you had a stint in Morocco. I just I mentioned to... Moroccan women. What? <laughs> <laughs> I had to I had to make sure that I was identified as a married person because they have very beautiful women yeah. in Morocco and uh, I don't know where Mike was going but that's all he needed to get me started about Morocco women, very yeah, beautiful I and I noticed something about them mm. they're very very fit Mm. Whether you're a man or a woman, they're always very fit. It's mm. very difficult or, or it's hard before you see an obese Moroccan. Do okay. you know why? Mm. Why? Their food it's mm. mostly vegetables, fruits, yeah, yeah. and plant-based. Mm. So they don't have that factor of where you're eating too much, consuming too much animal fat or yeah. meat or oils and stuff or like eba. that. Eba, and everything. Yeah, so. Fufu, So I came up with a flutter stomach. And this morning, wow. uh, Zainab, the producer here, was saying, I'm a senior big guy. He's like, no, let me take up my shirt for you. I'm like, wow. Don't, don't. So, you see, I, and I, I, I was, I, I, there's something I saw this morning, and we were talk, talking about how, uh, how, how much it's, how much a lie it has been that exercise is mm. a very important factor in building your body. Mm -hmm. I would, I would say not really, mm. but diet plays quite a very yes. important yes. role, especially yes. when it comes to the abs. Yes. You're, you're you know, at a party. When you're doing all those crunches, and yeah. all, maybe for, for, for some others, no. my experience can say so, but for abs, yeah. mm. that's how you eat. Now you're at a party, and then they're bringing the rice around, and you're like, you don't want rice. Mm -hmm. You just want the meat or the chicken. Yeah. And they're looking at you like there's something wrong with you. Mm. Like, hello, I don't want the rice. <laughs> but then that meat <laughs> you're taking. <laughs> Tell you guys what we're going to do. Some more uh, well, information for you here in terms of the news, and then uh, we'll do weather before that and then we'll be back with more Wake Up Nigeria. Welcome, my name is Mazino Appeal, and this is the news for Wake Up Nigeria. Let's start in Lagos State. The Lagos State Governor, Babajide Salonwulu, has advised residents to be cautious of the new variant of COVID-19, the Delta variant. Now, Governor Shamaolu uh, made the statement while addressing journalists at the house, a state house in Ikeja. He stated that from the beginning of July, the state has experienced an increase in the number of daily COVID-19 cases. He said the event centers and worship houses will still maintain 50% capacity while sending a strong warning to travelers who came in from red zone countries listed by the Presidential <laughs> Steering Committee. Doing less than 10%, and so that's why we all need to take these things very, very seriously, you know, entering, you know, um, this third wave. And whilst we need to continue to communicate this to ourselves, that issues around um, 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 social gathering, you know, and, and social events, um, all of those protocols are still in place. You know, we still have the safety commission that will be going around 50% occupancy in a lot of um, 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 event centers, you know, in churches and mosques, you know, we're, we're reiterating, we have not closed down on any of those things. You know, nothing has, has gone off, we're reiterating it back again to say that they're still in force and people must ensure that they comply and they obey. If people are coming into a public space, you have the right to deny entrance. If people are, don't have their face mask on, you can say to them nicely, they need to get, have their face. Because it has shown, record has shown that people that have their face mask on actually reduce you know, um, the, the, the level of transmission and the level of possibility. And away from uh, COVID-19 instances now, but still on health matters, despite the spread of COVID-19, cholera and other diseases in the country, the National Association of Resident Doctors, NARD, has made good their threat by embarking on their proposed strike over unpaid salaries and benefits. The health workers are also demanding the immediate withdrawal of a circular removing house offices from the scheme of service. The doctors had embarked on an earlier strike in April, leaving many patients unattended to across government-owned hospitals in the country. The strike has been suspended about 10 days later after they uh, met with federal government representatives. NARD National Resident, uh, President Dr. <coughs> Ohahe Sui Oyilawa said on Saturday that the federal government had not fulfilled its promise of giving its members the insurance benefits. <coughs> 
And outside Nigeria now, um, several villages and tourism facilities have been forced to evacuate as continuous wildfires sweep across Turkey's coastal resort towns. The blaze in the uh, Manavgat district of Antalya reached Sechkoi village and authorities ordered the evacuation of residents. A large number of fire engines, rescue vehicles and helicopters arrived at the scene to put out fires, but strong winds and continuous high temperatures have affected rescue efforts. Health Minister uh, Ferentin Koka uh, announced that seven people have been killed and 507 others affected in Manavgat by the fire which hit the area on Wednesday, according to the Minister for Agriculture and Forestry, Bakik Pagdemirli. Uh, 111 fires uh, that broke out in the past five days have been contained, with six others still burning. Hello and welcome back. It's about time for us to look at what's happening on the covers of the papers this morning. And today is August the 3rd. It's a Tuesday. We're starting with the Daily Trust this morning. And the major headline is this. Buhari mum as APC weighs options on Boni committee. Cracks widen. Uncertainty prevails. Caretaker committee meets today. Or Shimbajo, others continue search for solution. Danger ahead, lawyers warn. It also says here, <clears throat> just below the masthead there, 2023, why Nigerians should reject APC, uh, PDP, uh, according to uh, Jega. Transcorp's half-year profit leaps by 713%. Uh, Seplat next, $62 million. More on page 21. <clears throat> it also says here, <clears throat> sorry, medical supplies crippled. Patients stranded as resident doctors down tools. And there, as you can see uh, from the photo stories, we have uh, ATBU in Bochi. We also have Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, uh, Lasuth. We also have um, Ilori Teaching Hospital, uh, all void of doctors and uh, medical activities. Let's see what's at the bottom here. It says COVID-19. Lagos records 30 deaths in one week, according to Songulu. Federal government to MDAs, don't give permanent vehicles, houses to boards. And uh, finally, it says, police arrest IPOP, ESN financier, 26 others in IMO. And that's what we have on the cover of the Daily Trust. We also have uh, <clears throat> News Direct here. And it says, Nigerian News Direct newspaper says, nationwide strike, residents, rather resident doctors, shun stranded patients. As relatives seek treatment in private hospitals, no work, no pay directive will not work, according to NARD. Page 3 has more on that. Federal government takes delivery of 4 million Moderna vaccine doses from the U.S. Jaga warns Nigerians against voting for APC-PDP in 2023. DMO offers additional uh, federal government bonds for subscription at 1,000 naira per unit. And meanwhile, Somolu flashes red flag as COVID-19 cases surge in Lagos. That's what we have on the cover of News Direct. That's what we have time for on the headlines in the dailies. We're going straight for some fun facts, and then we'll be back. And right. you are welcome back. It's What's Up and About mm -hmm. here for a Tuesday. And yeah, we feel that it is very important that we talk about the um, increase in Delta variant for COVID-19 that yeah. um, is uh, recently ravaging through the world. And Lagos mm -hmm. State, Nigeria is not an exception because mm -hmm. the governor only just told about the fact that we've had 32 cases and 30 deaths, which is very, very um, saddening to hear. Mm -hmm. um, also noting how it's been attended to by the state, by the country, encouraging, eh, yeah, well, but then mm -hmm. I've seen lapses here and there, mm -hmm. personal yeah. experience, because um, I've seen situations where at certain points of entry, people actually are paying wow. yeah, no more, no. for wow. certain uh, things to be overlooked. No wow. And this saddened me in wow. my experience. I just wanted to point out that you're not saving anybody, you're not mm. helping anybody, but you're, and I mean, the authorities who are, yeah. uh, who are, are, are culpable here, you're not mm. helping anybody you know, we do it. It's at not, all. Let me today, we do it with the yellow card and all that before now, mm -hmm. yeah. which uh, um, before now, is or was and still is a prerequisite for mm. traveling and all of mm. that. So it's a new thing. Mm. Yeah, well, it's it's very it's, it's, it's very really sad. sad. It is sad. Um, and you know, I was I was just thinking about um, how how Ebola was curbed by mm -hmm. just one, by basically one, one doctor 
making that move to, you know, make sure the whole world or the whole society was protected. Mm -hmm. Are there still people like that that would go out of their way to, you know, block the road for a patient zero, you mm -hmm. know? Um, it, it, it's, it's a scary thought. You know, uh, you know something <clears throat> about one very major challenge we have mm. with COVID mm. is the people that we have that we expect to know better who yeah. are driving theories. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I saw something yesterday was the most incredible thing I've seen in a long time. But how five presidents were assassinated because they believe mm. they stood against the COVID Mm. Uh, Five agenda. presidents. Which president? Mm. Which president? Mm. Um, the Haitian the president. president. Oh, come on. Oh, good. These conspiracy theories actually Gosh. get me. I'll tell you. So, well, Gosh. They feel like movie scripts. And one, so, some of it's, them are being pushed by very intelligent people. That is, see, yeah. that's the, so that's where there's a problem. the amount of influence that Do you understand? That's, where the, that's, that's, the pro, that's oh, that is where the challenge is. And mm. if you are a student of history, mm. you don't even need to be a student of history. At every point in time, whenever there was something mm -hmm. that plagued humanity, these things happen. People were always, some people were reticent. Yeah. It, 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 this thing has spilled out so many times over and over again. Yeah. And then it gets to a point 10, 20 years from now, yeah. and everything is now so okay. Mm. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to think on. of, I'm trying to think of how people fought against measles vaccine. I'm trying to think of how they fought against chicken oh, the, the pox. The difference would be one small factor, yeah. population. Yeah. Population back then wasn't as much as it is yeah, right now. Sure. I mean, we've crossed 7.5 sure. billion, and mm -hmm. you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, as a science student, not that type, not mm -hmm. that type. It's all Mother Nature trying to balance stuff. But mm -hmm. we, as the dominant species, are trying to also alter that as well to provide for our uh, sustainability, you know, mm. and all of that. It but, does feel like global yeah. warming also kind of plays a part in this Yeah, well, well, that's another... That, yeah. That's another, that's, <laughs> that's another uh, topic, Going man. into science. But, uh, the, yeah. the effect it's on lot. our social uh, activities, mm. especially the Olympics. I don't know if the <laughs> outcome, uh, what we're seeing, the medal tables yeah, and how everything is, is switching has something is. to do with the lack of... Yeah. Act, lack of... of lack, no. lack of crowd. Lack of... The lack of crowd. Lack, lack of... of a, you know, so, you know, there's, there's, there's something about the crowd spurring you on. Mm. Imagine if we had... A live audience here. Ah, ginger. Yeah. No, it's a live. Actually, I'm ginger all the time. No, but you, no matter how <laughs> ginger you ginger. are, you know, so when you have people who can respond to you, who yeah. can, who you can bounce your energy. Who back would on. laugh at my joke I told you? Yes, exactly. Morning. Who would humor you? Yeah, but on the flip side, all the understand. football leagues that have been playing back to back with sound effects, they've been doing great. No, they haven't. No, they haven't. No, they really? Haven't. They've actually been. No, they been, haven't. They haven't. The really? performances have been. I'm not even they a football haven't. person, and I can tell that there's, <laughs> a, there's a certain. This is worry. Because some, some certain teams haven't. have now started no, they winning haven't. and some no, they have started haven't. losing, no, no, they doesn't haven't. mean that they've not been doing no, well. They haven't. They Come haven't. on, it's it's uh, it's not. Let's not go into all of that. Oh, they yeah. haven't. They mm -hmm. haven't. Mm -hmm. But you know, but like like I said, I mean, when mm -hmm. you are in, um, we had Divine Odudu who was mm -hmm. disqualified at 100 meters. Yeah. Now he has qualified for the semifinals of 200 meters. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then you see we have Essie Brume, who has now won, who was now picked up a bronze, our first medal since 2008 in the Olympics ever. You understand for a long jump. Now she has. She, earlier in the year, she broke Choma Ajumwa's record and all of that. We've seen mm. cases where you see athletes, you know. She, she, she got that, she hit that jump at her first try. Mm. She didn't hit, you understand, she didn't, do, mm. she didn't do as well as her first try in other jumps. But we've seen where the crowd yeah. gets somebody. Spurs, you, yeah. Spurs, you understand? Yeah. They don't do well the first time. And then yeah. you go, huh, yeah. huh, yeah. huh. Yeah. That, that, that's that's the this, screen, this, the Yeah, that's how, of course. There was this, um, when Iceland went beat England at um, two uh, tournaments back, they had this chant. Where they go to their fans, mm -hmm. yeah. and then the fans, the, the, the clap, they had this Slow clap. clap. Slow clap, yeah. And then you know, it, it had this Viking yeah. kind of this, and yeah, then you, exactly. uh, you know, what it was. and then you feel the players <laughs> will just feel like Ragnar on exactly. the beach. <laughs> they will see anybody, you understand? So uh, you you cannot you see that it's the crowd. Yeah, it you will can't take do you without it. In football, they the call, they call they the crowd, they call the crowd, the twelfth person, the twelfth yeah. player. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot it can do True. for you. Yeah. So, but kudos and um, congrats to SA. And, um, Congress to Nigeria. I, mm. I would, I would, I was not, now. I was not, uh, the, well, the sports minister has, we've trashed him enough and we're still trashing him more. I don't know what he's doing there, but the whole thing about... Uh, well, what do you expect that he should be doing at a point, at a time like this, exactly? Uh, you know, he said about how, it, what, 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 what were the mm. words he used, about how uh, it's God's grace or something or something. Look, mm. a particular church has sponsored some athletes, Mountain of Fire. They have mm. done so much, yeah. especially when it comes to wrestling and, and weightlifting. Mm -hmm. yeah. They have done so much to train athletes abroad mm. who have come to represent Nigeria and not represent 
the church or anywhere. What do they that gain from that, by the way? You, uh, it's it's all about development of the people. It's yeah. all about it's about the person. Yeah. What do you love to do? What are you good at? Okay, you can do this thing. We'll do you can it. be the best in the world. We'll support Let me you. sponsor you. And look at look at mm -hmm. them. That church has done so much from registering a football club in the local well, league. What do you do there? Mm. Yeah, that's that's her. Now she is she is sure of a silver at least because she's now in the finals. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? She can mm -hmm. go for gold. I mm -hmm. was so proud of her. These are people that are she she entirely has been sponsored by wow. MFM. I wouldn't I wouldn't like to take her and money. It, <laughs> I, <you> know, <laughs> and it's not, you know, she has she was, she was sponsored for training camps outside uh, the country by MFM. Mm. You understand? Yeah. They have done a lot. Yeah. They've done a lot. And 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 uh, kudos. Kudos to MFM yeah. and all they're doing for well, us. Tell you what, at least Nigeria. now we know where uh, Mike's gonna be worshipping this Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really it's it's amazing. It's amazing what they've, they've been able to come up with. But we have to at this point take a quick break and continue with the show. Wow, I just broke a sweat just watching that guy. Oh my well, wow. Okay, I think I need a meal after watching that. And Chef Taddy is going to be helping us out with that in the kitchen right here on Wake Up Nigeria. Welcome back, Chef Taddy. Welcome. All right, so what are we making this morning? We're making um, sweet potato wedges. Wedges. Yes, wedges with okay. um, giza teriyaki. Teriyaki. Yes. All right, so what, what is the difference between normal giza stew and teriyaki? <laughs> uh, teriyaki is a cooking technique. Okay. Used... Um, uh, in Japanese, okay. By Japanese, so okay. I decided to. Mostly we have chicken teriyaki, mm. um, fish, and all of that. Yeah. I just decided to use gizzard. Gizzard this time. All right, amazing. So let's talk ingredients now. What do we need for this meal? Uh, I can see here we already have our sweet potatoes. Yes, sweet potato, standing by. Mm -hmm. um, tomato puree. Okay. Um, gizzard. Yeah. Onions. Honey. Mm -hmm. Honey? Yeah. Honey? Really? Okay, so honey is, uh, what, is this going to be like a base for the cooking or is it just like an added flavor? Yeah, an added flavor. Okay, all right, beautiful. Uh, I haven't seen the tomato yet, but I guess we'll bring that yes, out in sure. a bit. Um, are we using any types of oil? Yes. What um, are we using? I will use, uh, what's it okay. called? What, what's that Sesame called? Oil. Sesame oil. Yeah. You can bring it up. Sure. Sesame oil, like this. Okay, and then um, I know that sesame oil has been known to have a particular flavor. Flavor, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what's the first thing we need to do to I get this mess? All right, pure. let's go, let's go. go I'm a big fan of sweet potato uh, myself, but okay. why did you choose uh, sweet potato as opposed to... I decided to use sweet potato. Hmm? I, I love sweet potato and... Um, um, it's, it's a, uh, it has fiber. Okay. So. All right. Very fibrous option yes, there. Sure. Um, I just, I've, I've had this phobia for peeling potatoes for a very long time. I just boil or steam my potatoes okay, straight up. Peel it. And then I after. peel it. <laughs> I cannot stand the peeling part. Um, but I also noted that there's a lot of fiber on the skin. Yeah, sure. That you know, could be saved if, if you boil it directly. But you're not planning to boil this, you're planning to fry. Yes, no, I'm not pl pl planning to, I'll boil. Okay. After boiling, then I'll grill. You will grill? Yeah, sure. Amazing, amazing. So uh, should we be preparing anything on the heat right now? No, I'll put this here. Okay, all right. Okay then, so we're gonna be peeling these sweet potatoes uh, right down, but then, What's the difference between chips and wedges? Chips, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of thinner than wedges. We, wedges is a little bit bigger than mm -hmm. chips. Okay. Yes. I'll definitely be looking out for it, what it, it has more flesh mm -hmm. than chips. Yeah. Does it take longer to, to cook, though? No, it mm -hmm. doesn't. Okay. All right. Uh, your gizzard seems uh, you've already prepared it. Yes, I did. So what yeah. was that process like? Mm, just boiling. But did you add something to it? Mm, um, normal seasoning. Okay. Seasoning. Um, I love the onion and garlic combo. There's a third item there. What's that? That's, is that ginger? Yes, that's ginger. Ginger, but, but man, ginger can be, can be really harsh, you know, a very harsh flavor. It's a lot of ginger there. Are we using everything? Not, or... everything, not everything. Okay, all right, fantastic. 
Okay, so we have our gizzard, we have our onions, garlic, ginger, and of course the sweet potatoes. Sweet potato wedges with teriyaki gizzard. All right, so the process, uh, once we've finished slicing up our sweet then potatoes, we boil. we boil it one more time. So boiling for a few minutes, okay. then we grill. Then we grill. Yeah. All right. I've actually um, been trying out some new things in the kitchen myself, especially with the whole air fryer thing. Okay. You know, you know we have an air fryer in here as well. I didn't, I didn't mm -hmm. notice. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't notice? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we have an air fryer here. Been trying yeah. out some new stuff, um, especially with less oil. Mm? Yes. So tell me, please tell me we're not going to use that much oil for this, this meal. No, no, we're not using much oil. Okay, all right. <laughs> So if you're trying this at home, uh, just do everything you can to get prepped ahead of time so you can just put everything together. Um, once again, all you need is your sweet potatoes, you need garlic, you need ginger, you need onions, and then of course your gizzard. Now gizzard is readily available uh, in most supermarkets and in fact the market, I believe. It's one of yes. the more affordable proteins. Uh, not everybody takes it like in their soups or stews they take it as a, like a snack or at when they go to it's very go good. hang out. It's mm -hmm. very good. Mm -hmm. Yes. I started, you know, uh, looking for more affordable options of proteins in okay. the market because beef right now is so expensive. Chicken as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, gizzard might be that option, you know. You might decide to start using gizzard as opposed to beef or chicken. Uh, you could also try maybe liver you know, kidney, but everybody's go-to seems to be Pomo these days. <laughs> <laughs> we see a lot of Pomo on the show here as well. Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. All right, so what can I help with? Um, do you need to put water on, oh, on the I have heat? water in here. You have water on yeah. heat already? Just rinse this and... All right. Seems like you got this. Is this something that they request a lot in your restaurant? No. No? Yeah. Okay. Hmm? Ooh. Okay. That's the sound you like to hear. That sizzle. Fantastic. Okay. I also noted you didn't put any salt or pepper or any of those spices here on, on the table. Are you planning to use any of those? No. Not Since at all? Uh, yes. All right. My, my dip um, mm -hmm. will be a, a little bit sweet because of okay. the honey. Okay. I'm not adding um, salt oh. or... Fantastic. Sure. We're almost there, people, almost there. We're going to peel down all these potatoes and, of course, use our ingredients. Please try it at home. Use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC as soon as you can. Send us your videos and pictures of what you were able to create. We're going to be taking a quick break and be back with more. Now, thank you for staying with us. Uh, Dr. Tiwa Tayo Lashe Bikon is a senior resident doctor, Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Yaba, Lagos. Yaba left where they get everything right. He obtained his medical degree at the University of Ibadan, Nigeria, and attended the University of South Wales, United Kingdom, where he bagged his master's degree in business psychology. Now, we're talking about depression today. You're welcome, doctor. It is great to have you. Thank you for having me. I, li I like that tagline, Yaba left where... You do everything right. Yes. <laughs> you, you guys are doing well. Thank you. All right. So I feel like in Nigeria today, we are all depressed. <laughs> in one way or the other. Well, <laughs> and there's a reason why I would say so. Okay, so why do you say so? Ah, if this country was better, we we'll all feel better. That's just my world we'll do better, world we'll do better. But then let's um let's uh, let's let's break it down. What exactly what do you mean when you say someone is depressed? How do you how do you differentiate de depression from just being sad or maybe a mood swing? What exactly is depression? Okay, thank you. So you see, for um, some people use depression to mean sadness, you know, mm. just in layman English. Uh, but when psychologists or psychiatrists talk about depression, we're talking about some intense form of sadness that is persistent, mm. you know, and, um, you know, colors everything you do, such that even when something good happens, Internally, you still feel sad, mm. you know, and you know this goes on for a while. Mm. Usually, it doesn't come alone. So, I mean, that kind of sadness comes with not wanting to do anything, feeling tired easily, you know, losing pleasure in things that you know used to 
make you happy before. Okay. So before you watch the football match, but now you're not as interested. You okay. know? And sometimes, you know, we have things like people not wanting to eat, lose appetite, people even lose weight as a result. Mm. You know, then uh, and some other people gain weight. Some people gain weight. In fact, yes, you're right. Some people gain weight, some people eat a lot. Mm. Why some people don't sleep well because they are depressed, they wake up early thinking about some people sleep the old Oversleep. day. Oversleep. Yes. Mm. yes. So, yes, you so know, it's, at times it's unique. There's, there, there's yes, some of symptoms course. that are unique. No, to, of course, to, to, to individuals. Persons. Yes, mm, okay. of course, of course. All right, so uh, being that as it is now, I know there is a, there's, there's something called clinical depression. Yeah. And of course, how do you, what is clinical depression? Okay, so uh, clinical depression means like bad things happen to everyone. Mm. And sometimes you feel quite sad. I mean, for example, over the last weekend, with what happened in Nigeria, the Olympics, mm. people getting banned, disqualified. Of course, I mean, I felt sad. Mm. But, you know, in a matter of minutes, maybe even hours, you know. You, you get over it. You get over it. So by the time you're unable to get over this sadness, mm. you know, and it begins to affect your daily life, mm. your daily functioning. You wake up in the morning, you don't have the energy to do what you would have done normally. You know, people at work are complaining that this is not really who you are. Mm. Your husband, your wife, your parents, this. Notice that there's some form of change, you know, which is affecting your daily life. Um, you know, yeah. Normally, you like church, for example. You'll be early for choir rehearsals, mm. and it's as if you are dragging yourself. You don't even go anymore. Mm. So by the time it's beginning to affect your life, then it's not just sadness, it's clinical depression. Right now, so um, are there um, uh, medications that people can use? How do you diagnose depression and how do you know where mm. medication comes in or where maybe self-help and just to talk okay. can bring the person out All of right. depression? So, as psychiatrists, we qualify depression into mild, moderate, and severe. Okay. So there are cases of mild depression whereby just psychotherapy, what we call talk therapy, would okay. help. Would help, okay. You know, but by the time it's getting to moderate and severe, medications might need to come in because at mm. that point, you know, um, there, will, there will be some form of, you know, imbalance in some, you know, chemicals in the brain. In the, in the brain, huh? Yes. So, so that pep talk alone, you know, or even not just pep talk, now even, you know, qualified psychotherapy, you know, talk to the person and it's still not able to get the person out of it. So at that point, you need medication. So at that point, well, we are saying that it is outside um, forces that affected the person so much so that chemicals in the brain Well, are, well not just we outside so? forces, okay. you know. So depression is a combination of internal and external forces. Okay. So we have vulnerability factors. What do I mean? Some people, as a result of their genes, their personality, okay. you know, may be more susceptible okay. to depression, depression than others. Than others. So right. that the same bad event happens to 10 people, you know, mm. and then two, three people, you know, get into depression while the others don't. Okay. That's because of some internal factors, okay. you know, that the, each person already has. You know, some resilience factors, some so that the external factors just come and tip the person over into depression. All right. So for those somebody who is at home who maybe has started uh, seeing some of these symptoms and all of that, what's the best form of advice you'd give to such a person? Oh, so we like to say that you know it's good to just you know talk to a specialist. Now you know, imagine you talk to a psychiatrist. You know, the, the issue there is that as um, Africans, we think that seeing a psychiatrist means that, you know, maybe you're mad. No, that's exactly, not true. That's exactly. Not true. We see hundreds of people, you know, at our hospital who just want to talk to us, you know, who mm. think that there's something wrong, and then, you know, we just talk to them and discover that this is what is wrong, this is what is wrong, and then we get to solve the issue. Mm. Where we need medication, medication is involved. Where we need psychotherapy, that's talk therapy. We do that. What if what if what if a, um, a professional is not close at hand? I can't maybe I stay in somewhere I cannot get a psychiatrist close at hand. What will somebody who has those kind of symptoms? What is the most immediate thing they can do? Okay, so well, the first thing is to talk to somebody even around you. Even around you. Yes. Okay, so get to socialize or something. Yes, talk to somebody around you. So you are beginning to feel some kind of symptoms. You know, you you feel just too tired. You are not happy. You know, then maybe it's just talk to a trusted friend. Now that mm. trusted friend, you know, would even help you. Mm. You know, maybe help you get in contact with a psychiatrist, a psychologist, mm. you know, help you, you know, or you can come to Psychiatric Hospital Yaba, mm. you know, or social media, you know, there are some of us on social media that you can mm. talk to, and then, you know, at the end of the day, you'll be able to get help. Mm. Okay, and then, um, uh, you might, we might also have situations of people who, uh, it's hard to 
figure out that they are depressed. Mm. On the outside, there's that, uh, mm. on, on, on the surface level, on yeah. the subcutaneous level, you see them, they have good, but you know, but sometimes it can be deep seated in such mm -hmm. a way that it's not easily recognizable. Yeah. You know, in those kind of situations and... Yeah, so you see, depression, uh, unlike happens. some other type of mental illnesses that other people can easily spot, mm. you know, um, for depression, it's something that, you know, individuals spot it themselves first before anyone does. Mm. That's why I'm saying that if internally you think there's something wrong, you know, wrong enough for you not to want to wake up the next morning, mm. you know, wrong enough to think that you are, you are worthless, yeah, you know, then you yourself might need to summon up the, you know, the courage to get help. Mm. You might need to summon up the courage. And then in cases where, um, in cases where people, uh, well, when it comes to talking to professionals, you know, and people say, okay, I've talked, I, when it's not a professional, maybe a friend, and people tell you that they don't want to speak out because of the stigma. Mm -hmm. There's some sort of stigma. Like you mentioned mm -hmm. social media. Mm -hmm. So people tell you that, okay, if I don't speak out, they tell me, and I do something, and maybe I, I, I do something harmful, they tell me, why didn't you speak out? But then I speak out, and then there's a stigma attached mm. to it. I mean, how can society help, you know, in, in, in such cases where people are afraid to come out to talk because that stigma? Yes, it's if, the truth is that I'm actually happy what is going on what has been on in the past one year mm. when it has to do with mental health in the social media and social space. For example, um, this lady, Simon Biles, was able mm. to come out last week and say she's withdrawing from the Olympics because of her mental health. Mm. Yes, people still stigmatize that, but the truth is that when people like that keep coming out and saying things, you know, it becomes less um, stigmatizing. Mm. Uh, yes, you know, because um, one thing that those people also, they're also human beings. Yes, those exactly. that are at the top, they can also go through this particular situation. Exactly. You know, and yeah. because, because even at that, a number of us still, uh, you know, uh, a, a number of people still, you know, want to go uh, after after her at that point yes, and say, okay, course. hey, you're weak and all of that. Yeah. We're saying that no matter what happens, no matter what the stigma that may be, be attached, it's better that you speak out and let yes. it be known than just keeping it inside. Especially because it's very treatable. Hmm. You know, it's hmm. something that we can help you out of. Mm. You know, and of course, when we say social media, you don't even have to tweet it. I mean, there are DMs now. That you can you know, get into other organizations. We have things like, you know, She Writes Woman, there's money. You know, these are organizations that help people, you know, with, you know, help you connect with um, the appropriate um, therapist. Therapist that you can get and you can yes. talk to and all of our social media. All right, thank you very much, Doctor. This was quite uh, an enlightening discussion. And uh, mm -hmm. I hope uh, people get to, you know, talk about this, uh, you know, push away from that stigma. That's, that's a major problem. But I, I hope that with uh, this, people are more enlightened uh, to understand and treat depression. Yes, yes, Thank you, doctor. Yes. Thank you. All right. Okay. Now, I know a number of you um, have told me, uh, some have reached out through DM, that you were depressed when they're cooking the food and you can't taste it. Uh, you are seeing the food and all that. But, doctor, there's something like food. Is there something like food depression from seeing food and not <laughs> being able to eat? Well, uh, let's hope that Titi has something for you there. Titi, yes, how can so you help those kind of people that, have, that suffer from uh, food yeah. no calm depression? Yeah, so some, you have to find happiness wherever you can find it. If you find it in the food, Chef Tade can help with that. Thank you so much, Mike. And Chef Tade has been hard at work in the Wake Up Nigeria kitchen. We're making potato wedges, sweet potato wedges, uh, and teriyaki gizzard. Oh, easy. Uh, so if you weren't tuned in earlier, just know that we put the gizzard uh, to griddle or to grill a little, uh, and it's all crispy now. It's not exactly as crispy as if you would have fried it, but it's crispy all the same. The potatoes are also put to the boil, but this is par boiling, right? Yes, par boiling. Par boiling, and uh, at this point, you're slicing them down. Um, so is this the wedge shape that you were looking for? Yes, wedge shape. Okay, fantastic. I can also see that we've added some of the other ingredients that we're gonna be using. This is honey. This is honey. Uh, this is- Tomato puree. Tomato puree. So where do these come in now? Hmm? Um, I'll make the sauce. Okay. So I'll have to add that into the sauce. Okay. That's after I'm done. With the potatoes. What happens with the potatoes like right now? Uh, after have to grill. Grill. All right. Fantastic. So after pot boiling, just put it right in the griddle pan. Are we adding anything to it? No. No. Just put it on the heat. Okay. Fantastic. I can see it didn't really take long for the potatoes to, to, to get yeah, soft, true. which is another great thing about sweet potatoes. You know, it doesn't take time at all. 
Um, but then this gizzard, I don't know, it's, it's looking crispy. <laughs> it, was that what you wanted? You wanted yes. it to, no, to dry up? Preparing, uh, teriyaki is a technique Okay. Uh, used in cooking. And, and mm -hmm. you have to use a grill pan mm. to, to cook. Okay. Cooking, yeah. mm -hmm. That's the whole idea? Yes, that's the whole idea of teriyaki. Okay, okay. All right. I also love this technique of using a knife and fork to, to slice these wedges. Okay. Ah, yes, everybody in the studio is getting hungry. Chef Tade, we're relying on you. We're looking to you. Thank you very much for this. Uh, and uh, for those of you at home who are trying it out, please use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC and show us what you're doing. We can't wait to see it. Make sure you stay with us. Let's take a quick break and be back with more. And yeah. you're welcome back. It's the second hour here of your number one breakfast show on Nigerian television, Wake Up Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And if you love the first hour, well, wait till you get a dose of the second one. It's going to be great. Yeah, as always, we try everything within our power to make every single second of your time with us count. Hopefully, yes. we live up to your expectations. Yeah, for a lack of better description, we would just say that we are number one at everything. Yeah. And we remain pure and undiluted family okay, okay, entertainment. Okay, 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 stop promoting. Yeah, stop please, promoting. Uh, you can <laughs> always use my voices for anything you guys want. Yeah. <laughs> ah, side hustle. <laughs> I record audio books too, you know, I'm just saying. In any case, <laughs> in the first hour, I got a challenge. Mike actually yabbed my beard, which uh -oh. I've been grooming what for a beard? while. Oh, that one? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the joke was right there, Mazino. You walked into that one, really. You did. <laughs> they can't miss it. The shadow from the TV. They can't. They can't. Okay. You know what? <laughs> In any case, at least I've got a very well beautiful head of hair. Oh, that's that some people. Back. My hair is not scared of my face. Oh. <laughs> my lord shall answer you by fire. <laughs> you will see. <laughs> You want us. I'm not going to touch that one because oh, Mike just spoke to, you know, the doctor. Uh, we're going to be here oh, for boy. the next 45 minutes and we're going to be on this journey with you. My name is Titilaya Oyinson. And my name is Mazino, the haired mm -hmm. one. Appeal. Mm -hmm. Remember, uh, you can use the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria. <laughs> yes, I never let go on yeah. TVC across all social media platforms. Download the app so you can watch us from anywhere you might be in the world. It's mm -hmm. on iOS and also in Google Play Store. Yeah, we implore you to follow us across all our social media handles. And when you're commenting on Mazino's beard or lack of it, use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TV. So, so this, is, this is actually happening. <laughs> this is happening. It's, it's Okay, no problem. In any case, on with the show. We've got Mojishola Eniloloba. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. Yes. Also known as Jisola, it is, she's a Nigerian um, uh, singer and songwriter, and she began her music career in 2009 as a backup singer for artists like Benga Oke, Benga Oke, and also, well, many others. Mm. We can't wait to have her here. Um, she won the Shakti Bobo competition. I don't know if you guys remember. Oh. So we'll get to talk to her about that. Mm hmm. C.C. Oni is the founder of Value Added Parenting and a graduate of business admin from Unilag. Now, she is skilled in advanced parenting, learning style identification, and much more. We're going to be talking to her today on uh, talking about children's learning styles and how parents can take advantage of this holiday to discover it. Yeah. And Abuchi Pizza Uhu is a chief executive officer at Iconic Nigerian Records label, Chocolate City. He is a uh, respected professional in the Nigerian and African music industry, as well as the wider creative sector. Now, he got his start in the music industry in 2008, working as an engineer and producer at one of uh, at Chocolate City, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, since then, he has risen through the ranks. And today, well, hey, Did we can't wait you? to see him yeah. and have that discussion with him on his process. Yeah. Interesting mm -hmm. stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering about this, you know, this kid's holiday that's happening now. Mm. Mike, when you were a kid, what are the, you know, best memories that you had Look, of your man, holidays? like I said, I, and that's why I really have a problem with holidays this period. Mm. Mm. It's changed and I don't mm. like it. Okay. Kids are meant to play. Mm. Play is a very, very strong part of growth when it comes mm. to kids. Mm. We're spending too much. I mean, now, after school on normal, when, when school is in session, after school they are doing lessons. Yeah. Mm. And then when it's time for holiday, they now have, it's now, it's, it's just like school. You go, you leave mm -hmm. in the morning again, yeah. and then yeah. you go up until night and all of that. 
how much time do these kids have to discover other things and play? Yeah. Mm. True. Mm. So my wife came to me a couple of days ago, and yeah. she said, so summer classes have started. And I'm like, well, summer what? Who? Where? What? Because <laughs> I don't believe in summer classes. As much as I, I, mm. I believe in education, and my daughter loves to learn. Yeah. The yeah. first child I've ever seen that loves to learn. My daughter mm. wants to learn all More. the time. Mm -hmm. But I said, no, you're going to play. Yeah. You're going to stay with the neighbor's kids. You're going to play. You're going to mm -hmm. have your fun time because yeah. it's part of learning itself. You get sure. to discover stuff. And it is. in that discovery it is. mode, um, uh, the other day we had some new equipment over at the studio here. Yeah. And there were these big chunks of, uh, what they call those packaging thing? Yeah, jigs, those, styrofoam. Like, styrofoam. Yeah. And I took... <laughs> I just loaded them in the car. <laughs> like my, I, I got stopped by the VIO guy, uh -huh. obstruction. I'm like, sorry, it's for my daughter. <laughs> you know, so they helped me pack it up. <laughs> Took it home, and you need to see what she's doing with them. She's yeah. coloring them. She's yeah. building castles with them. She's, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. Just I hope she becomes an architect. There is, lovely. <laughs> lovely. <laughs> there is a lot that kids so learn much, But I know play. that... Yeah. It, I know a number of parents do it because yeah. they don't they don't want to watch over the kids because if kids mm -hmm. are playing, yeah. you definitely have to have I think you term there. it differently. There there is no time to <laughs> Somebody's stay guilty. With Somebody's the guilty. Kids. Guilty. You There's no make, time. You have to make mm -mm. The time. So guilty so the average it. parent, the average <laughs> banker is still doing their nine to five, no matter what holiday yeah. it is. The average they TV have, presenter is still very they busy. They have to save Mike, up for those look, school fees that look, are coming. Look, you can't Find your, look, find that. your level. I, that, that's one of the worst things ever is when I see um, celebrities or video mm. come out and start complaining about school fees. Or when you find your level. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yes. Don't oh, come out and oh, school Mike, fees. Mike, I want to die. Mike, calm down. No, no, find Mike. your level. Uh, that is me. Because Mike, when you come... Calm Titi, down. Back on your side. Titi, back on your calm side. down. We will, we, will <laughs> have, we will have this conversation <laughs> when your baby mamas <laughs> call you and, no, no. and tell you you way. have Pekin. Nah. So fine. welcome to Subville. I'm serious. This level. is a new segment here. I'm on serious about this. I will say, say to you guys that make noise about Mike. it. Find your level. Mike. Go, I mean, everybody, can, Mike. they're making so much noise about it. Find your level. Get to where you can train a child. And come back to us when you start paying the fees, Mike. When you start paying the fees, Mike, come back to us. But do um, the weather. <laughs> yeah, and this is going to take place even you. behind the scenes. It will, Continue. definitely. <laughs> definitely. I'm not but Mazino is on uh, a particular page with me that you might not be on, Mike. I'm not, uh, it's all about, about being the best we can be in our situations. Yeah, yeah, That's what it's about. Yeah, yeah. Let's take the weather. Be, be. <laughs> Mike. And you're welcome. Let's do the news for the second hour. It's a rock is here in the studio, but we have debates that we're going to conclude maybe even after. Welcome. My name is Mazino Appeal. Now, Governor Babajide Shaolu has advised residents to be cautious of the new variant of COVID-19, the Delta variant. Now, Governor um, Shaolu made the statement while addressing journalists at the State House in Ikeja. He stated that from uh, the beginning of July, the state has experienced an increase in the number of uh, daily COVID-19 cases. He said the event centers and worship houses will still maintain 50% capacity while sending a strong warning to travelers who came in from red zone countries listed by the Presidential Steering Committee. Doing less than 10%, and so that's why we all need to take this thing very, very seriously, you know, entering, you know, um, this third wave. And whilst we need to continue to communicate this to ourselves, that issues around um, 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 social gathering, you know, and, and social events, um, all of those protocols are still in place. You know, we still have the safety commission that will be going around 50% occupancy in a lot of... Um... And away from COVID-19 now, but still on health matters, despite the spread of COVID-19, cholera and other diseases in the country, the National Association of Resident Doctors, NARD, has made good their threat by embarking on their proposed strike over unpaid salaries and also benefits. The health workers are also demanding the immediate withdrawal of a circular removing house officers from the scheme of service the doctors had embarked on an earlier strike in April, leaving many patients unattended to across government-owned hospitals in the country. The strike had been suspended about 10 days later after they met with federal government representatives. NARD National President Dr. Ohai Hyusui Uyilawa said on Saturday that the federal government had not fulfilled its promise of giving its members the insurance benefit. <clears throat> and outside Nigeria now, several villages and tourism facilities have been forced to evacuate as continuous wildfires sweep across Turkey's coastal resort towns. The blaze in the uh, Manavgat region, uh, the district of uh, Adlaya, 
reached Suchkoi village and authorities ordered the evacuation of residents. A large number of fire engines, rescue vehicles and helicopters arrived at the scene to put out the fires, but strong winds and continuous high temperature have affected rescue efforts. Health Minister Faratine Kuka uh, announced that seven people have been killed and 507 others affected in Manatgav by the fire which hit the area on Wednesday. According to the Minister for Agriculture and Forestry, the Kik Pagdenmeri, uh, uh, 111 fires um, have been uh, uh, affecting the area for the past five days, and they have been contained, with six others still burning. Ah, that's beautiful. Just a lot Emilo Lobo there for you, and I got that right the first time. That's beautiful. Well, hey, that's very nice music for a mo uh, Tuesday morning. But now, onto something very, very interesting. Equally, we've been joined by Ola Bisioni. She's the founder of Value Added Parenting and a graduate of Business Administration from the University of Lagos. She is professionally skilled in advanced parenting, learning style identification, and also diagnosis, as well as parental coaching. She currently works as a consultant, tutor, and a resourceful uh, trainer. She is here to talk about children's learning styles and how parents can use this holiday to discover it. You are welcome. Very good Thank to have you, you here. That's the first time we're together, I think. Yes. So this is a different vibe, so don't worry, enjoy it. Let's talk about kids, let's talk about parents, let's talk about the holidays all together now, because this is the period when kids are supposed to be at home. It's an opportunity for parents to discover their kids and help kids discover themselves. But learning is a big part of this, how to learn uh, um, all of these little factors and nuances that come together to make kids kids and help parents actually build their passions. So let's talk about learning styles uh, this holiday. Um, as a parent yourself, uh, what is your expert advice? Yes, as for that learning styles, we all learn through different things and we process information and retain information differently. So the learning styles help parents to understand their children better. It helps you to know their area of interest. It helps you to know their ability and helps you to channel it to the right place. Mm -hmm. And we have three basically types of learning styles. We have auditory learners. Okay. They learn through what they hear, listening. Mm -hmm. They learn through music and mm -hmm. they are easily distracted. These kind of children talk a lot. They mm -hmm. can ask questions from morning to night. Mm -hmm. And you are wondering, why is he talking? But if you know his learning styles, you know, this actually opens our eyes to so many things mm -hmm. parents are ignorant about. Nice, interesting. What your child will even be in future, you can discover it like that. And you will know why your child is different, and you won't be able to compare your children. Mm -hmm. Like, I have two children. I have two sons. They mm -hmm. are totally different. They are like opposites. Wow. But thank God for the knowledge I know. If not, I would have been comparing them. Yeah. My first son started talking from like two months. All this bumbling, yes. Mm. Started talking. But my second son is close to three years old, but his words are still not clear. Mm. But thank God for the kind of mother I am. I'm not comparing. And I know they are strength. They are totally different. The other one that is not talking yet is so brave. They are the kind of children that when you put things here, you can meet it in another place. They are so energetic. They are so, you know, they have this kind of strength that they are the ones that break things in the house. Mm. Yes, those are the kind of children. And if you don't understand them, you start beating them. You yeah. can beat them. And that's the same. That's from my side. So yeah. it's important for every parent <laughs> to know their children's learning styles. The second learning style is visual learners. Okay. They learn through pictures, what they see. If you want to, you know, like parents, you want to give your children instruction from your room. If you say it like, okay, I want you to leave that place right now. I want you to do this thing for me. For an auditory learner, he grabs it. He can't act whatever you ask him to do. For okay. a visual learner, he wants to see your expression. He wants to know whether you are serious about what you are saying. Also, it's very interesting what, you, what you've just said because I'm also looking at uh, my daughter here as a sample uh, and I'm noticing that she falls under one of these categories. My daughter is pretty much the visual person. She has to see you give her an instruction. She, she wants you to explain what it is pictorially. She wants you to, where is it? What side of the cover should I look? So she's, so I see what you're saying there. That's very interesting. But these are things that parents normally never take note of, normally don't give attention to. Just, you know, why can't you learn? Why don't you understand? But if you understand the kid I'm getting now, 
is you can, it helps you even put together your, your instructions to them. You know 80% about your children if you know their learning styles. Mm. For kinesthetic learner, mm. they are the most, most suffered one because you see that they tax some children, some students that they are dull. Mm. It's not that they are dull, but what if the approach the teacher is using to teach them is not favorable to them. What's that third type of learner? Kinesthetic. Kinesthetic, okay. They want to undo things. They want to see you do it. Tangible, they want to, they, touch. Tangible, they want to touch it. Mm. Like, I use this as a, an illustration a lot. That if you are in a class and you have these three learners in a class, teacher, if you tell them, if you mix color red and color white together, it gives you color pink. Mm -hmm. You don't need to show an auditory learner. Mm. You can't even set an exam in that place. It, it, it can cut, cut 100%. Mm -hmm. But for a kinesthetic and visual learner, you have to bring the colors. Do a sample you of it. You have to mix do it, it, mix it. Mm. All the three learners can get to, mommy, give me color red, give me color white. My I'm teacher said, if I mix it, it will do it. But visual learner wants to see that color. You have to do it. Kinesthetic must touch it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how can we use the holiday? as a, a, an opportunity to understand our kids, these three learning types? Parents should, you can go online and learn about these things. Good question now that Mike asked earlier is, should we use this opportunity as a time to send them to summer school or should we get involved Jesus. in their learning? You should now? use this time to bond more with your children. Most parents don't know their children. You, you, you know, your children come back from home, they say a lot of things. If you are not there to correct them, that mm. thing will live in them. And for parents, this summer class, they've been in school for a whole year, like nine months. Mm. So this one month, you still want to send them to summer class. Even if you want to, they close early. Mm. Still find time as parents to spend with your children. It's very mm. important. This summer class, you have one month to do that. You, your half period, you can't make it happen in this period. Mm. One week is not too much. Set a routine. Set time, know when you go out, spend time with your kids, eat out, do all those things. They are very important. And this is the right time. September is coming mm -hmm. while everybody is back. The children leave home on time. Yeah. And if you are lucky, if your children use school bus, even, and you close late at mm -hmm. work, it means for a whole week, you might not even set eyes on your children. Mm. So this is the, the most important time. This one Big month, they should pick it up and... So for these three learners, the visual, the or, or audi auditory. auditory, and the kinesthetic, in their interactions together in a community, a classroom, for instance, or a summer class, um, how do they affect each other? Do they learn from each other? Do they rub off on each other? Yes, they do. It depends. Mm. Because they are different. Okay. Like an auditory learner loves to mm. read. You can talk mm. from morning to night. Kinesthetic, they don't talk right okay. on time. Okay. So they prefer doing. Well, I wish we had more time, but thank you very much. It's an honor always having you here, and we've learned so much. I've learned personally, and I hope that you have out there as well. We're looking forward to having you back on the show again. Let's learn more about our kids and how to interact with them better. Do stay tuned. We've got more coming up on Wake Up Nigeria. My name is Masino Peel. Thank you for staying with us. Abu Chipita Ugu is the Chief Executive Officer at Chocolate City. He's a respected professional in the Nigerian African music industry as well as the wider creative sector. He got his start in the music industry in 2008, working as an engineer and producer on a number of projects in Chalk City. He went on to manage one of Africa's most prominent uh, music arts, MI Abaga, for over a decade. It's great to have you. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you, know, you for having me. We're showed as entertainment based, and we get to have all the stars, the musicians, and all of that. But we don't get to see so much of you guys, the ones who make things happen behind the scenes. So it's quite. Um, uh, it's quite a pleasure to have you here this morning. Thank you. All right, thank you. Well, but before we talk into, uh, go into the business of um, of heading a, a record label, yeah. let's talk about how you came up to become the you know yeah. the CEO of Chocolate City. How did it start for you? Talk to us about your journey. Yeah, I, I was a sound engineer for a long time. Okay. I, started, I, I, I always tell people the story. I started engineering by looking, by watching, and by seeing. watching. Yeah, I think when I was 16, 17, Funny enough, I used to be a roadside mechanic. Wow. Then I just wanted more. So wow. Then I was just like, oh, what do I do more? Then there was a studio where the young people always gravitated towards. Mm. And I just showed up. Said, oh, I want to learn. And then I was just like, oh, there's no space. I was just, don't worry, I'll clean. So I showed up, started sweeping, then started learning. Engineering. Started sweeping the studio. That's how I started. Oh, wow. Then I... from there, came to Lagos, moved to Lagos, got a job. 
was as an engineer, so I used to mm. produce radio programs okay. for people. I think, yes, there was a new radio station that popped at that time. Mm. We used to produce like radio shows, a lot of countdown shows. Okay. And that's how I started. I had worked with MI for a long time. Okay. I think then worked on the video whiskey project that year. Almost everything that sort of came out during that time frame. What did they see in you and how did you become, I mean, what was it that made you, that made you stand out in such a way that you became the CEO of Chocolate City? So, it's, I think it's all about value. Hmm. And that for me, early on, I understand that this is just about value. The life is all about value. Us having okay. conversation will transact value from one face for to one another. Face to that. I like that. And I just like that. being in the ecosystem for a long time. Okay, so I understand how we don't that. Understanding that, understanding... Mm. How do I create value for all stakeholders involved? Involved. Now, talking about yeah. that value you create, what is the daily routine of a CEO mm. of a record label? What does that job entail? Mm. So I think people see the glam. They don't understand the people's management you have to manage. Mm. They understand the social media is a huge part of it. They have to keep up the image for... Because people see... Like, people, they say you're good as your last job. So your job mm. is mainly the artist. Mm. So now it's like, how do you present this artist to the people. Hmm. And now when this, this generation, you're just not, I was telling someone, you just, it's not about music we're selling anymore, it's top of mind. So how do I make sure anytime you look at your phone, like I have a talent that is in the conversation. And then the younger people go. You know, talking yeah. about our come and go, and most times when we hear about record label bosses, it's always when there's a, most, uh, it's mostly associated with contract disputes. Yeah. The artist is breaking his contract. Oh, uh, the, 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 the record label gave me a contract that is slavish and all of that. It happens quite a lot. Yeah. What are the challenges as a record label boss that you face when it comes to artists and contracts, giving mm. them contracts and how, you know, the, with the whole disputes that come in to play whenever, whenever they would want to break mm. away from these contracts? I think, again, education and communication is key. So when you, you have to understand. And when, so when I talk about communication, I think communication is a two-way street. Mm. And again, I always tell people that knowledge is progressive. Mm. So what an artist understand yesterday is different from what they understand today. And just take a normal scenario, an artist makes, you meet an artist, he doesn't even have 5,000 there. In, in the span of two years, he gets to a point where he makes 2 million a, a week. In a normal structured environment, for you to move from 100k to 2 million is like about 10 years of work. Mm. So you've built the discipline, you've built the culture, you've known, okay, this is how I'm going to do. You know there's certain things that are possible, you know every action has consequences. Mm. But now you've moved to this side where the money just shows up. Mm. And you feel like, no, I can change the wheel. So then there's an agreement normally from the record label and the talent. Where, okay, we've agreed. They, the artists get to a point where they want more. Mm. So sometimes it could be the label's fault because I've seen labor take advantage of the artists. Okay, it does happen. It does happen Okay, sometimes. all right. But sometimes I've seen where the artist just wants more. Mm. And the labor can't give more at that, at that particular at that point, point in time. And then it's in business, sometimes they're just like, it might not seem rosy, but let's build the stream. Mm. And again, with the artists, they get to a point where people start offering them times 10 of what you can of offer. Of what you can offer. Okay. So at that point, it's like, do you, have, do you let them go? Or do you fight? <laughs> or is it about ego? Now, is it about business? Is it about... Again, back to value. Mm. So I always tell people, define what the price is. Define what your value is. So when we get to that stage, I just let you know this is what my price is. Wonderful. And when uh -huh. you're willing to buy or find me a different value, then I'm like, okay, let's go. Wonderful. Now let's talk about Chocolate City as a unique entity. You know, um, the Chuck Boys, there was an era when the Chocolate City was, you know, I had the Chuck Boys, there was quite a lot about them making all the bars and then issues and all of that and all of that. Um, recently, you know, it's labels generally. Mm. You know, I was talking to someone and they were like, uh, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't hear so much of uh, labels as we used to, let's say 10 years back, when, you know, the labels at times are even more prominent than the artists, yeah. you know, the, the, the label names, you know, stuff. But nowadays it's like the labels, like everybody maybe is just more concerned about the heat. You don't, the labels are not, are not as prominent as they used to be. Uh, what would you have to say about that? I think it's evolution. Mm. In everything, you have to grow. So there's a point where it was chocolate City forefront, it was more heat forefront, it was this. Mm, yeah. So now there's an evolution where now you have, have let's say, MI. So let me give you an example. This same chocolate city, we had Jeremiah Gang showed up. Mm. We had MI, MI, we had Jesse, we have Ice Prince. Mm. After Ice Prince, we had Victoria Kimani mm. showed up. We had Coca, we have Dice. 
you have down to every two years we sort of have an, somebody that shows up. Yeah, that shows up. So now we have uh, black bones. Mm. Before black bones, there was dice. So there's always somebody. We've always been consistent in the, but it's just that the communication sort of changed. So we moved from communicating an artist to now. So okay. we had 100, um, 100 black bones were signed into okay. Chocolate City property. Property, all right. So we're building. So for example, if I tell you, to yeah, in the, okay. Oh, because mm. the imprint, a different imprint. All under the same. The on that, the same umbrella, yeah. but both of them might never meet. Mm, or have anything to do with Any each other. interaction with each other. You know, so so you, now with the record label, you have to evolve to the point where it's content and it's numbers. Mm. So I was telling people that when you have a conversation with people like Sony, when they come to the market, they come with five million catalog songs. Mm. The only way you can grow is how do you start acquiring other labels that sub labels that could, that you build the numbers. So Chocolate City in a great year can do 100 content a year. Okay. But the, the way I could scale is have Ten chocolate cities on the house. All right. That's, that has been the evolution. evolution. I like that. Yes. You know, someone says if you don't evolve, you die. Yes. You know. Okay, but let's let's look forward. What what projects do Chocolate City have on hand? What can people uh, yeah. look out for? Fans of Chocolate City. Now that's a name that a number of people still yeah. hold there. You know, it rings a bell and it holds it, it, it holds something for people. What can they look out for? What to, to expect? First talent I have. I always tell people now, it's all about creating content that provokes. Okay. Provokes whatever. I'm we're going to create. So we have Black Bones here. He, he mm. had an album a month ago. Okay. We have like a number one. Okay. We have a number one album mm. in uh, Nigeria. We had the number one single in Africa. Okay. And then I have MI's album is coming soon. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. We're looking forward to that one. Yes. And it's we have other, other project. Wonderful. Uh, this is wishing you the best. And uh, you. There, there's a tenure, right? How long have you been there? How, how long do you have? How long do you have to go? Four months. Okay. Uh, it's about eight months. About okay. two years. So All I right. still have more to go. Okay, wonderful. Uh, wonderful. Uh, but you, this is wishing you the best. And uh, thank you. See you topmost. Okay? Thank you. Thank All right, you we have something family. for you. But then, hey, come on, let's check out this video. And of course, uh, the Chuck Boss is going to have something. Uh, is it chocolate in over? We'll get to check out what's in the kitchen, but check out this video. I have yep. to say the industry has changed, Yes, though. indeed, it wow. has. Still got the Chuck City boss mm -hmm. in here. Hey, <laughs> Uchi, you. good to have you here. So when Thank you're not doing all the CEO-ness, what are you doing? It depends. It depends on the day. Mm. Mm. So I, I run, before this, part of the job I did in Chocolate City, I run an agency okay. called Being Creative. And nice. we do about 200 activations a year. So oh, that's, that's busy. beautiful. And then... I try to keep fit by playing polo. I like animals. I love animals. So I have all the big boys polo. Yeah. <laughs> Not really. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll warn you about that though, because horses have a mind of their own. Don't trust them. In any mm -hmm. case, we have Chef Taddy in here. He's made a very beautiful delicacy. Yes, he um, has. You work with him in the kitchen. I'll let yeah. you two, Chef. Please tell us exactly what's happened since. All right. We have uh, potato wedges mm -hmm. with um, giza teriyaki. Oh. Giza teriyaki. Okay. Yeah. So this, this uh, looks great. Yeah, it sounds alive too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> please have a taste. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Try it, please. But one thing I can say is that you know teriyaki is usually with uh, chicken or beef, mm. but doing it with gizzard is a nice twist. Oh. And I'm a big fan of sweet potato, so I, I can't wait. Anything sweet potato? Yes, mm. I like. I like myself. Mm. Right. Love it. Yeah. So what do you think? Love it. Would you sign that onto your record label? <laughs> if I if I have the right, <laughs> <laughs> if you can give me the right, we just must produce. Let's, let's sign it on. I, I know, like growing up mm -hmm. in the house, it was only the father that ate gizzard. Oh, really? Yeah, like I think it's a tradition it's thing that oh. they said mm -hmm. it's only the male that ate gizzard. I know about chicken head. Well, now, this is a new yeah. one. I think okay. it's better, wow. teacher. Yeah, wow. Wow. <laughs> well, it's good to have you but here. Thank you. Great to learn about your process and everything. We always uh, look forward to having um, you guys on Thank Spices you. of the Show. Thank you very much, Chef Daddy. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, Thank you for having me. Go to one restaurant now. This one will be 20000 now. Yeah. <laughs> but you learned it here for free. So go out and try it at home. Use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC this. Yeah. and make your version of this. Thank you uh, so much. Mike is still yeah. going through um, well, wishes for his hair, but um, <laughs> 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 it will never happen. <laughs> <laughs> some teriyaki see, will help your ministry. You see some words of wisdom there. You <laughs> see, uh, what we can see with our bed sitting down. 
<laughs> with the plenty hair, you cannot see me if you climb on top beauty. Oh my dear, you wish you were me, don't you? <laughs> and okay, it's been a great show. We love that you guys joined us this morning. Join us again. Join tomorrow. them tomorrow. It's Wonder Woman Wednesday. <laughs> These guys will be booted out of the studio tomorrow. And we're not complaining. The we ladies like will be taking over. 7 a.m. people, join us. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye.